What's up you guys, my name is Mark and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I turn this 3D model of a lightsaber handle into this realistic, full metal, stainless steel lightsaber prop. Let's go. I purchased these 3D files from the Galactic Armory website. I'll have a link to the site and the product page in the description below. So a few months ago, a company called JLC 3DP contacted me and wanted to know if I wanted to do a collaboration project with them. And <laughs> I'm not obviously gonna turn down the opportunity to get free stuff. So I was like, yeah, okay, let's do it. JLC 3DP is a prototyping service company that specializes in top tier 3D printing and CNC machining, including metal 3D printing. With a vast production facility spanning over 3,000 square meters, that means over 32,000 square feet for all you Yankees out there, and 200 industrial grade 3D printers, they deliver high quality items swiftly and cost effectively. At least that's what they told me. And holy sh did they mean it. I decided I wanted to print a full metal lightsaber hilt out of 316 stainless steel using their selective laser melting. All I had to do to place my order was click on the order now button in the top right hand corner of the website. Now from there I could upload each piece of my lightsaber handle. I could choose the type of material and finish I wanted and the quote updated for me in real time. Since I chose to print with 316 stainless steel the cost was way more than it would have been with just printing in PLA or ABS. Although it's expensive to print with metal it's super cool and if you have the chance you should definitely try it for yourself. In addition to the metal parts, I also got plastic parts printed with their Imagine Black resin material, which was significantly cheaper. I got both because I wanted to compare the detail and finish quality of both materials. After submitting my order, it only took five days to get all my items printed and shipped. It takes longer to 3D print metal items, so if I just would have ordered the resin prints, I would have received them in two business days, which is an outstanding turnaround time. My packaged items showed up in this really nice cardboard box with their logo on it. Everything was super well packed and had plenty of bubble wrap. I was absolutely blown away by the quality of the metal parts. The surface finish reminded me of an item created from sand casting. The print quality of every piece was outstanding. Even though the surface finish wasn't super smooth, it didn't take away at all from the detailing. I also couldn't believe how heavy these parts were. Obviously they're 3 16 stainless steel, but they were almost seven times as heavy as the plastic parts, which made it feel like I was holding a real lightsaber hilt. The black resin parts also came out fantastic. They were already super smooth and would need minimal sanding before primer and paint if I was planning to use these plastic pieces for this build. Overall, I was extremely impressed with all the parts I received from JLC 3DP and I am definitely going to be using them to print me more parts in the future. I already have a long list of items that I want to metal 3D print using their technology, so you can look forward to those videos in the future. For the internals of the lightsaber, I ordered a NeoPixel blade and core off AliExpress. Yes, I ordered from AliExpress, which is basically just a glorified version of Wish.com, but to my surprise, the parts were actually pretty good quality. The total cost for both of these items was about $125, which is significantly cheaper than ordering from pretty much any other standard website out there. I'll have a link to the exact items I purchased in the description below. The Sabre Core I ordered comes with 12 preset colors, 16 different sound fonts, and nine different blade ignition effects. And it's already pre-wired and fits into a plastic housing that will fit any DIY lightsaber. I mean, for 60 bucks, how could I pass that up? For those of you unfamiliar with NeoPixel blades, the way these work is through the use of conduction pins at the end of the handle that make contact with the metal plate at the end of the blade. There is a series of protected LEDs encased in the blade so that when the pins make contact and the lightsaber is ignited, it gives the blade an extension and retraction effect. It also gives the user the ability to light up certain sections of the blade in different colors. It's super cool and if you've never seen one or played with one in person, I highly recommend it. Okay, so here is where the fun or not so fun part begins. 
Because of the rough surface finish of the metal parts, I decided to take a Dremel and sand down all the parts until they were shiny and mirror-like. This took forever. I only showed a little bit of this process, but you get the idea. When all the parts were dremeled down, I used some fine files to get rid of burrs on the edges of the parts, as well as eliminate any deep scratches. This also took a long time, but patience is key. After that, I sanded all the pieces with sandpaper starting at 150 grit and going all the way to 1000 grit. Once again, yes, this took forever, but if you skip certain steps, the finish of your parts won't be as flawless and shiny. It's really up to the personal preference of the person doing this, but I wanted my parts to be as mirror-like as possible. After sanding, it was time for buffing and polishing. For me, this is a two-step process. I use a buffing wheel and coarse black polishing compound to take care of any deeper scratches that were left on the parts. This also prepares the pieces to be buffed with an even finer compound. After cleaning the parts with soap and water, this is what it looked like. Second compound I used was a green polishing compound, which is intended to be used to finish stainless steel parts to a high luster and mirror-like finish. I was very careful to get every crevice and cranny of each part so that the finish was as uniform as possible. After repeating these steps for each part of the lightsaber hilt, I was left with these amazing mirror-like parts that look and feel like the real deal. The hilt looks awesome with just the polished stainless steel finish, but I wanted a more movie accurate prop so I decided to add color to the parts as well. My first attempt in doing this was through the use of electroplating. Electroplating is the process of depositing thin layers of metal onto a conductive surface through the use of electrolyte solution and constant current. Now I wanted to give the handle some gold accenting, but if you think that I'm gonna spend $180 on two ounces of gold electrolyte solution, you're freaking insane. Instead, I opted to try electroplating brass onto the stainless steel. And although this worked, it didn't give me a really bright luster and shine that I was looking for, so I decided to buff off the brass coating and just go with transparent acrylic paint instead. I think if I had more time, knowledge, and resources, I could do some really cool stuff with electroplating, but not today. The first part of prepping the items for painting was taping off the areas I wanted to keep in the stainless steel finish. I used a combination of frog tape and masking tape. It takes a bit of time to tape everything off, but if it isn't done well, the paint will end up bleeding onto the sections of the hilt that I don't want colored. After I got everything taped off, I was ready to head to the spray booth. I use black transparent acrylic paint for the main parts of the handle. It applies super easy with an airbrush, but if you don't have one, you can also just use a paintbrush, that's fine too. I then used a red transparent paint for the ignition button. After the paint was dry, the tape was removed from all the parts and the lightsaber was assembled for an aesthetic fit test. I liked the way it looked, so the last step for painting was adding the gold accents. For this, I used a gold chrome paint pen. Now, these pens don't give the best finish appearance, but for the small areas I was looking to cover with them, they worked just fine. After the gold accenting was done, I sprayed all the parts with rust 2X clear coat and this was the result. The last step of this build is the assembly, which is incredibly easy. Both metal buttons are glued to the hilt using contact adhesive. The lightsaber electronics slide right into the hilt and are screwed in using two M3 8mm screws. The top part of the hilt screws onto the bottom and the blade slides right in. This is then secured by an M3 6mm screw. After all that, what's left is a realistic, full metal lightsaber prop that is actually durable enough to be dueled with. I love the way this thing turned out and honestly, it really does look like it belongs in a professional Star Wars movie. Plus, the light and sound effects are awesome too. Thank you guys so much for watching and a special thank you to JLC3DP for supplying me with the metal parts. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more content. Until then, may the force be with you and stay classy.